So I've seen a lot of different videos of people explaining how to play Deja and the other versions of Mirage, but the one that I think is the most powerful and most consistent top three, top two, if you high roll a top one, is Electric Overload Leona Carey. So today that's what we're going over. It's important to know this is only works with the Electric Overload version of the Mirage trait. Highly is important on three starring your Leona and your three starring your Yone. You're gonna slow roll at level five, and there's actually several different strong boards that you can do early game. You got the standard version with Leona and Yone getting two Mirage and then just four Guardian. If you high roll a Lee Sin and an Ezreal too, you can try and run Tempest with your Leona and Yone. This kind of gives you a little bit more stun. There's a Cavs version where Lilia can help do damage, especially if she's two starred, really strong champion, or even a Shen and Skarner to get you Warrior and two Bruiser if you happen to two star these units. Though ultimately your goal is to end up level eight with this board, which will get you four Guardian and six Mirage. Best in slot Leona is Ionic Spark, Warmogs, and Gargoyle Stoneplate, and Yone's is Rageblade, QSS, and Gunblade. So starting on first carousel, I tend to go for either Cloak or Rod. These are pretty flex options. Uh, it can go into a lot of other clumps. Rod can go into like mages and Cloak can go into like your scale scorn. But in this comp specifically, Cloak will go for three of your main items, Gargoyle Stoneplate and Ionic Spark, which is honestly a really great tank item right now anyways, as well as our QSS for Yone. And then Rod can go for our Rage Blade or our Ionic Spark for Leona. Though we don't know which Mirage it is on our first carousel, I tend to go for Rod more because it's more flex of an option. You can go mages or into any other comp that would use like a rage blade. Now here on one three, I did get a Nunu and I see a Leona in my shop and I check the Mirage and I see it's electric overload. And I decided that I actually really wanted to try this because I hadn't run him yet. So I sell pretty much the rest of my team. And I know a lot of people don't play this comp. So it's very uncontested. We also do have the cloak and now we have a belt as well. So we do have two item components for our Leona items. Still holding a couple of pairs just in case we don't end up going this Leona comp. Obviously we have two Tom Kenches, two Sejuani's. Sejuani also can be useful if we just want to go for more of a uh, Cavalier since we have the Nunu already. But on our first carousel, we're offered Featherweights. Loot Master's not super great and Devastating Charge isn't super great, especially because Lily is highly contested right now. So we just go for Featherweights. We also managed to find a Z22, but Yone's gonna be able to attack a lot faster. He does really well with attack speed generation. So he should be able to get off way more procs of his own since we do get procs from Electric Overload every time we deal damage and every time we take damage. So two Mirage Featherweights, we're actually in a really great spot to be playing this comp. Again, it's not really contested and it can flex into most other comps. Most carries can use Rage Blade and tank items tend to be pretty universal, though Leona does need these three specifically. Warmonks is important because the damage dealt is based off of how much health that is uh, being attacked, the actual Mirage unit, how much health they have. So giving Warmogs to Leona is going to get her doing a lot more damage by increasing her health by a thousand. So it's going to be doing 80 more damage for every attack. Then Ionix is also important because it breaks down their uh, magic resist as well as dealing damage to frontline or uh, in range units whenever they cast. So you can really burst down units like Nico or uh, Silas just really quickly and you can get Leona walking towards backline units and dealing damage to them as well. And with the Leona too, we're actually already pretty strong. We don't really need to force a win or a loss streak here. Our main goal is to just set up whatever our stage five board is going to be. That can be holding Cavaliers. It can be holding our uh, Guardian units. As long as we're saving gold and trying to econ up to 50, so at the end of stage two, we can start rolling at five. We're in a pretty good spot. Ideally, you should have a couple of Leonas by now. It's not too bad that since we don't have Yasuo, especially since we have Nunu, so we actually have the trade in. You don't want to take too much damage. I would say probably stay above 80 throughout stage two. It's really never great to lose health. It's okay to hold this Sejuani here over econ though, just because we're going to be able to throw it in when we natural level four. And that just gives us two Cavalier. So on second care, so we've got two cloaks and a belt. So we just want to complete our one item that's going to start off with ionic spark just because we don't have that much damage coming out yet there also wasn't a belt uh, ionics and warmonks i think are the two most important first since a lot of your enemy teams aren't getting out that much damage early i think being able to get our leona strong is more important and then our third item is going to be that gargoyle stone plate positioning we also keep leona up in the front so that she's getting targeted by as many units as possible and then whenever we get yone he's going to be able to just walk up and start whacking anybody who wrapped around the leona as well as not getting any aggro himself and here at stage 2-6, we do find ourselves a Yone and a Tarek 2. With this, I decide to sell our Nunu and sell our uh, second Sejuani pair. This is because it's more important to save Econ than necessarily to hold a trait like Cavalier. Cavalier doesn't do that much, especially if it's not Lilia. Lilia at least does damage. Nunu does a little bit, but but not enough, especially at one star to grief our Econ. If we can make 30, I'd ideally make 30. That and Leona is doing most of our damage anyways. So with this board and no leveling, we managed to get to Krugs with a 2-star Leona, 2-star Tarek, 
2 star Sejuani, 94 HP, and 40 gold. Off of Krugs, we actually do get a Rage Blade for our Yone. I do decide to roll a little bit while we're still level 4. We have increased odds at our 1 stars here, so I was hoping I might be able to find a couple of extra Leonas. We do find ourselves a Braum and another Tarek, but we didn't really get as lucky at this stage as we could have. But as long as we stayed above 40 gold, it's not too bad. We only lose 1 gold in each interest. And especially since we have a win streak, we're going to get more gold anyway, so it's not too bad. On stage 2 carousel, we're off for Thrill of the Hunt, Luden's Echo, and Cluttered Mind. Luden's Echo and Cluttered Mind actually do nothing for us, while Thrill of the Hunt gives us extra healing. And that's actually really good for both of our Leona and our Yone. Normally, it'd only be good for our Yone if we're doing like Yone reroll, but it's actually good for Leona since she ends up killing quite a few of the um, frontline units between both Ionic Spark and the Charge Overload. And now, throughout stage 3, we're just gonna stay level 5 and reroll for our Leona 3. Normally, you don't need any of these other Guardians to be 3 star, just Leona and Yone, but we end up finding a whole bunch of Tarek so I decided to start holding them. It's not that expensive, a three-star Tarek's nine gold, which isn't too much of a bother. Though Braum is 15 gold and uh, Thresh is 15 gold. That's like 15 extra rolls that you could have used to find your Yone earlier or just to help you level up. And I don't think it actually gets you that much value because once your Yone and Leona are dead, there's not much value left in your board. Here at third carousel, we're really looking to finish another item. So uh, this belt would have been nice uh, to finish and making a Warmogs, but obviously we can't. We don't th want this armor because it's on a Yone and we don't want to make a Yone 2 with an armor on him. So unfortunately, we do have to go for another cloak. This will probably make this will probably make a QSS later for our Yone or maybe a Bloodthirster if we aren't able to find Gunblade. Bloodthirster is an okay alternative. I just like I just like Gunblade a little bit more cuz it essentially doubles your healing. As long as Leona is still alive, she's going to be healed as much as Yone would heal himself with the Bloodthirster. The only difference is that you don't get that shield that you would get with the Bloodthirster, but you get so much shield from the four guardian anyways that I really value the uh the healing on Leona a little bit more. But if you just want to giga chag Yone, there's nothing wrong with that either. And here we actually see this thrill of the hunt really working on our Leona. She gets a couple of kills off of her procs. Uh, we do lose, but it helps save us a little bit of HP, which is actually really cool. I think as much healing as you can get on Leona is is as good as possible. And you can see we're just getting a bunch of Tarek, so we're going to hold them. Tarek's actually one of the few units in the game that his ability doubles when he hits 3-star compared to his 2-star. So actually, of the Guardians, he is one of the most valuable 3-stars if he's not your main tank. This is why he's also really good in like that Ezreal reroll that was really good at the beginning of the set, because Leona would cast like a, a armor on herself. Tarek would cast a huge amount of armor on her as well, and she would just become impossible to kill. So yeah, Tarek is a fine person to also three star if you find a bunch of them. Guardians tend not to be too contested, so this comp's pretty easy to go for. Now from Wolves, we do get a sword and an armor. This is gonna allow us to make a Bloodthirster and a uh, Gargoyle Stoneplate. Uh, I'm okay to just slam the Bloodthirster since we're not gonna find anything better to make with this cloak. Since it isn't really that bad of an item, and the only other thing that we would make with a cloak is a QSS, which we don't need just yet. But we hit the Leona three, and we are able to make, give her her second item. Just needs a Warmogs left. And we're even able to delete this Nico in like 0.5 seconds. She doesn't even get her cast off. It's actually such a huge power spike and it's so fun to play to watch her just zoom around and kill everything. We are going to level up to six and now we just slow roll for the rest of our Yones, who also seems to be not very contested on this patch. It's a good thing that Warrior's not super great. And for our third augment, we're actually offered the most broken augment in the game for this build. Uh, it's Hallucinate. Mirage Champions take 90% less damage for the first seconds of combat. We also gain a Yone, which is perfect for our cause. It's an instant grab. This Axiomark does nothing and neither does Earth grab bag. Now a fun fact about this orb is it actually doesn't pull the Yone out of the champion pool until after you open up the orb. So for now we technically have higher chances at finding Yone if we leave the orb on the ground and since we already have our Yone too we really don't need. So we're gonna find our eight Yones and then we'll finally open up the orb just to get it slightly faster. If I was playing a comp that needed a little bit more uh, uh, actions per minute then I maybe I would open up it immediately but since we're kind of slow rolling and we've kind of found everything except for our Yone I'm not worried about it too much. On our fourth carousel, uh, there's a Yone. On our fourth carousel, there's actually a Yasuo that nobody seems to want. So we just take that. That's going to give us two warrior for our Yone, as well as just a really good CC unit. This is actually really great that we got this early. It's not quite needed yet. We're actually win streaking. Uh, but it's it's super cool that we have it. Here's where we start to see ourselves needing a QSS. Our Yone dies because it's not able to get off of this Silas with a for Eternal Winter. And if we're not able to burst down these frontline units, then we really kind of suck. 
If we had a QSS, we would have killed it easily. We actually go really well into these healing or shielding comps, especially with this Ionic Spark on the Leona, but we just really just didn't have the damage. Now here at 4-6, we're starting to drop off, especially if we're not able to find our Yone 3s. Uh, everyone's starting to hit level seven, level eight, and we're still at level six. So we're gonna roll it down. We're not that far off of Yone 3. So we do go down quite low with our gold, especially since it's right before Treasure Dragon. When you suddenly use a fight after wind streaking, that just shows that the rest of the lobby has started to power spike. And the only spike we really, really needed was Yone 2. And actually our first Treasure Dragon gives us quite a good uh, setup with a QSS and a belt for our Warmogs. And now we have a fully stacked Leona and a fully stacked Yone. So it is okay not to have too much money going into Treasure Dragon if you are so close on all of your best in slot items. And since we already basically did, I wasn't too scared. We did also find a Deja and a Nunu, allowing to us to go up to four Mirage. If we, did, if we didn't have Yasuo at this point, I wouldn't actually mind throwing in Deja, but since we do have Yasuo, I want the Warrior. And now through stage five, we're just gonna try and greet our Econ back into a good place and then level up to level eight so we can take out the Nunu, throw in Deja and hit our six Mirage. Now, if you do happen to hit a lot of Nunus and maybe you find a couple more tank items on future carousels, here's a place where you actually could start rolling for Nunu three star and you just stay four Mirage and you throw in another uh, Cavalier, maybe like a Hecarim or a Sejuani, just anything that makes your uh, comp a little bit tankier. Then you have a more effective HP. Deja's not really gonna help us benefit from the Mirage, it just gives Leona more Mirage. But if you get a lot of Nunus, then it's fine to stay for Mirage since uh, he really benefits and, and will proc a couple more of those sparks just by being a Mirage unit, as well as having a lot of health and armor. Now, since it takes time for us to find our uh, Yone and Leona three star, we're not gonna be able to go level nine. So a lot of people are gonna be able to cap out their board a little stronger than us by going level nine, maybe hitting this Ao Shen. But this comp is a pretty safe uh, second place or a third place if you are able to hit. And then you do take the conscious effort to go level eight or level seven with a three-star Nunu. Off of fifth carousel, we do just find another Yasuo with the ZZ Rod. It doesn't really do anything for us uh, since it doesn't get anything from Mirage. So I just decided to uh, reforge it with this reforger we have and we find a Morello's. There's no amazing user for it, and actually putting on this Yasuo is not super great, but it does give him a little bit of ability power, so I just give it to the Yasuo. I'm not expecting us to get Yasuo 2, so if we find ourselves in a pinch, we're just going to sell the one Yasuo and then move the item over to Deja. But because of us having so many Guardian units and then big shields, uh, we're even able to tank a couple of pretty good Aoshin boards. This is a nice comp because it also helps keep the lobby what I call humble, where it's really hard for anyone to super win streak and make insane econ, so they're not able to get level 9 super fast or just roll way too much in order to find like all of their units there was one guy in this lobby that we did beat every time we fought him but we only fight them like one out of what eight every eight or so so they did actually get a couple of really good win streaks but it's a lot better than when you see like the top three players all win streaking now we have the quick qss so we're able to beat the silas with the eternal winter and honestly at this point the rest of the game is pretty set in stone we go ahead and level to eight throw in deja in to get six mirage we move the merlo to deja so on carousel we can find another yasuo item them, kill the third place Al Shin player and find Deja 2 and Yasuo 2. And then slowly but surely we do end up losing to the other Ao Shen player. It's a really strong board, so I'm not surprised. As well as he had perfect items on it, Giant Slayer plus Archangels. And this comp doesn't exactly have a huge DPS. It's entirely based off of one cost and two costs, so I actually don't mind the second here. This is about what you would expect, but it's honestly just such a really fun comp and it's pretty good at getting top twos. And if this video was helpful to you, it would mean the world to me if you uh, hit the like button. I just wanna share my content with as many people as possible. And that's the easiest way that you can help me out. And with that, I've been Runner Muffin. You guys have been amazing. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.